All right, g'day there. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans, and today we have ah oh, water, beautiful. All right, g'day. I'm Richard Musgrave Evans, and today what I'm going to do is show you how I stretch my Belgian linens. Now this is the gadget I use. It's just a uh, simple gadget I bought from the hardware store, and I welded a bit of angle iron on the end, so it makes a perfect pair of pliers for stretching the linen. Okay, so today's show will be about how I stretch the linen. I'll also put a little bit of clear primer on it to make sure it's protected. Then we'll go outside and I'll show you the easel on the side of the trailer and how that works. And also I'll show you how I slide these linens into the painting box in the back of the trailer and how they don't get damaged on the road. Okay. Now what I'm doing here is constantly working around. I do go from one side to the other, starting in the centres of all four sides. And we'll go from one side to the other, one side to the other, and we'll work our way out to the outside corners. That seems to be the best way to get it stretched tight without getting any buckles and creases and whatever. Just bear with me while I plug away. So what I actually do is, I buy my Belgian linen in rolls and I cut it myself and stretch it myself. Now this linen looks like it's clear and doesn't have a primer, but it does already have a coating of clear primer on it. Now what I'm going to do later in the show, once I've finished stretching this, is actually put another clear primer over it again because sometimes I'm just not 100% sure that it's completely sealed. I have had paint oil paint seep through to the other side when the painting's dry and that's not good the idea of putting a, a clear seal between the linen or the canvas and the paint is because oil paint actually rots canvas and rots linen so you need the protective barrier between the two it's a funny thing we all paint on canvases and linens and whatever but they really don't like oil paint they never have so through history there's always been this barrier that they put up, they call it sizing. And it's a protective clear barrier, it used to be done with rabbit glue, but what I'm going to use is a acid free PVA. Now why I say PVA, acid free, is because I have seen people use just straight PVA glue and it's very similar stuff as the size that I'll be using, but the only difference is having the acid free means you're not going to get get the whole thing attacked the linen is not going to be attacked by the acid over the years so 20 30 50 100 years down the track you haven't got anything eating away at your precious painting now the reason I showed you that pair of plies there I've just temporarily stretched and tacked all the all the corners out further even though I was working from the center outwards once I just basically established the, the edges, I then went and stretched all the corners out and then filled my way up to them. Now I'll just show you how I do the fold the corners. It may not be that easy to see what I'm doing, but let's do it anyway. Got a special little technique where it all folds away nice and neat. Just get in there, I'll fumble fingers, yeah get that right, no, no fear about that. And so yeah, all these corners are done just before you get the staples up to those corners. Got to leave enough room so you can get the folds in and once you've done that then you can get back into stapling the last few staples into the corners. Bit of messing around but it doesn't really take that long to stretch your linen. If you do a lot of it, it doesn't take too long.
All good, right. Let's get back into getting these last few staples done. Speed it up a bit so we don't get too bored. And uh, same deal. Don't just completely finish one side at a time. Just keep going around working it out and it just seems to pull it out gradually from the center outwards. And that way you get that really tight drum effect all the way across an even tension all through your stretched linen or canvas. There we go. Better put a few more staples in before I run out. Just in the nick of time too, I think. I only had about three or four left. That was a good, uh, good judgment. Okay. Now to finish off, I've got the big pair of pliers. To finish off, I use the small pliers get right into those corners the big plies don't really fit so you get it you get the small plies out and you can really get in there then all right now here we go Got the little pair out. I like to use the leather man, it's a great a great thing to use. Knives, screwdrivers, and of course a pair of pliers. And so that's what I'll be using now, the pair of pliers, to really reach into those corners and get those last few done. Okay, so we're pretty good now. Now this is the funny part. I've sped this up. A bit like a woody woodpecker. What I'm actually doing here is I'm just just going over the all the staples just to make sure they're completely flattened down. That way it's I mean the staples are pretty much all the way in, but that little bit extra just make sure you don't get any scuffs on the wall when the painting's hanging or whatever else. Just a neater job basically. Let's take it back to real speed. Okay, well there you go. Like a drum, beauty. Right, um, oh, <laughs> there we go, we've done it. All right, now. Now this already did have a uh, size on it. I bought the linen and it's already been sealed, but just to make sure that it's definitely sealed, I like to put one more coat. Because sometimes I find, even though you get a size linen, I've had the paint go through and we do not want that because paint in the long run will rot canvas all linen. And so what the size does, 
it puts a protective barrier between the canvas or linen and the oil painting so the two don't actually intermix with each other even though it looks like they do so you can't really have too much size it's got to be it's got to be sealed and this is um acid free pva size is very much like pva glue but pva glue is not acid free so the acid in the long run is not a good thing so same deal get the quality stuff so it'll last if you're going to go to the trouble to paint a nice painting well you want it to last don't you this is probably the first time you see me use a brush i guess <laughs> I can actually use a brush. <laughs> I actually used to use a brush a lot in my painting. And then I went from brush, I used to paint on board. I went from brush, started using a combination of brush and palette knife, gradually using more and more palette knife. Then I got to the stage I thought, heck, I'm using so much palette knife now, I'd really like to learn a way to just only use palette knife. When I was painting on board, I found that a little difficult because the board doesn't flex. And because the board doesn't flex, quite often the palette knife can leave a harsh mark where it's been. And if you want your palette knife work to look nice, you want to also have, have soft edges, not just harsh edges. So, where's a knife? See. Now the whole so it all flexes together. So as you're applying a big wad of paint, they all flex together and bend to each other. So you get a softer, a softer landing, basically. Listening to the sound of a fresh canvas has always got that beautiful drum 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 sound. Sounds good to me. Trying to reach right over there, I reckon I might spin her around. I'm not going around the edges only because, uh, like I said, there is already a protective sealer on it. Because I'm not going to be painting around the edges anyway, I figure that's probably okay. Right, now let's just finish this job. Just take a bit more of this. Lovely, look at that. I like to make random marks every which way to try and work it in, but also if it does, does leave any marks which it doesn't usually, but just say it did some really fine marks. I like the randomness. When I used to prime boards, I'd always prime them with little sort of marks like this, going this way, going that way. That means you get a slight texture from the brush itself, a bit like a tooth. Just a fine tooth to work with. Yeah, just got to be careful here, we only want the tiniest little bit. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll let all that dry. And then I'll show you how I attach. What have we got here? Ugh. 
these five mil bits of plywood is what I attach to the back with tech screws which means you've got the little ends that you can slide into the box and I'll show you the box soon where you can slide the painting in when it's wet in and out on slats and it all works well no wet paintings touch each other and that'll go on the back obviously like I said Great. As you can see, it is now dried completely clear. So it looks like just raw Belgian linen, but as we know, the primer's on it. Okay, now I'll turn it around and we'll put those slats on the back. If I could just find the right ones. And uh, we should be good as gold. Like the one for this size canvas. All right, now I reckon I'll come in about what, I about maybe 12. Right, so same on this side, about, I'll come in not about, I'll come in exactly 12 here, 12 there. Spin that one around so I can reach it. Hey, good. It's still on 12, which is good. So we'll go back to 12 here. Right. Measure twice, cut once. I like to get the measurements right. Everything fits better then. Right, so now, as you can see, what we've got is you can see that we've got five mil slats attached to the back and now this will stand vertical in the back of the uh, trailer and slide in and out of the box so what we'll do is we'll take it out now and have a look where it goes let's just put it on the easel on the side of the trailer and have a look now you can see I can put it on like that with the easel closed so the painting is right up against the trailer or we can unclamp it and I can open the easel up at 90 degrees. Now both ways are good. I like to have used it either way, depending which way the wind's blowing and which way the angle of the view and whatever else. Yeah, opening up is a great option and uh, I've got a third piece of metal here for a diagonal brace just to stiffen it all up. That just pops in like so. And then you've got pretty stiff setup, so it's pretty good. Now what happens is, this is where those slats come in handy, they fit perfectly on the same size as the easel and you just get some builder's clamps and just throw a few of them on, as solid as a rock then. We pan in, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
So those clamps are very easy to put on and it's very strong. That'll, that'll withstand a lot of wind. Now obviously if I was painting I'd stick a clamp on the bottom too. Alright, now let's see how it all fits into the back of this trailer. Let's just have a peek at it inside. Now that white box there is where all the paintings, all the wet paintings will go into. You can just have a bit of a look, there's plenty of room, I've got 12 volt system and all that, solar panels and whatever. There's all the tins of paint, I love the old Art Spectrum paint, they've got the big tin so it's great. But what we'll do is, have a look inside this box, this is the thing that really makes it all happen. Alright, well there you go, look in there. Now you can see, I'll just stand back a bit so you can have a look. You can see how it all slides in, we've got all the grooves, top and bottom. If you come around the back, you'll see the slats attached, the tech screw fits into the groove. Now that is a very simple system, but it really works a charm. And as you can see, you can fit a massive painting in there, or you can have a much shorter painting as well. I'll just slide it out to give you an idea on how it runs. Alright, now, what I'll do just at the end of the show is just show you how quickly, after you you know, put the painting away and you just want basically want to go now. It all folds away quite easily and there's the extra little uh, third piece of metal, whatever you want to call that, diagonal brace I guess would be the right term. Now I'm just fluffing around here a little bit but it actually clips on quite well and quite quickly. Once, I fig once Einstein figures out how he what he's done he can do it. Okay there you go. Now we'll just um, put these last few clips on and this really holds it firmly like I've got a, a bit of overkill I've got clips on every corner but what that does once that's clamped down that thing is going nowhere all right well there you go now that's how I paint or what enables me to paint those large paintings on location and put them away and keep on going on more adventures without messing all the paintings up Okay, well, thank you for watching the video, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. And also, press the notification bell, that way you'll be made aware of any videos as I upload them. Until next time, we'll see you later.